Let's face it, some people are born with natural talent for guitar and others are not. You and I may not like it, but that's the way it is. But here's some good news. When you have natural talent for something, all it simply means is you naturally do things correctly when you practice. And what that means is anyone can come in, figure out what those things are, learn them, or even teach them to others. I call this reverse engineering of natural talent. This is the only way that ordinary people can learn to play guitar really well even if they weren't born with natural talent. I want to share with you three tools that naturally talented guitar players instinctively do when they practice without even realizing it sometimes to crush their guitar playing challenges like eggshells and make other players envy their skills. So let's get right into it. The first is the idea of problem inversion. Now you may have heard of chord inversion in music theory, that's where you put the third or the fifth or the seventh of the chord in the bass instead of the root, and that's not what this is. I'm talking about inverting your guitar playing problems. Think of some problem in your guitar playing that you have right now. You might be frustrated with your guitar speed, or you may struggle with fixing some bad habit when you're playing, or you might wish you had more time to practice. You may ask yourself questions like, how do I play faster, or how do I remove this bad habit from my guitar playing, or how can I get more time to practice? And here's the thing, if you're not an expert at practicing, these questions are hard to answer. It's like asking, how do I build a hundred million dollar per year business when you're five years old running a lemonade stand? It's just way too overwhelming. But you know what's easy? Inverting your problems. Or as I like to say, getting clear on what you don't want to happen. So simply make a list of things that don't get you what you want and then avoid those things. Instead of looking for answers on how to do something, make a list of ways how not to do something. Let's look at some examples. Ask yourself, what should I do to keep my guitar playing slow and sloppy forever? I know it sounds ridiculous, but bear with me. With your bad habit, the inverted question might be, how do I make my bad habit even harder to fix? And with your lack of practice time, the inverted question might be, how can I waste more practice time each and every day? And with the business example, you can ask yourself, how do I lose all my money and go bankrupt as fast as possible? And here's what's interesting. It's often much, much easier to answer your inverted questions than to answer the original question. You simply can't go wrong by avoiding things in your problem inversion answer list. Now, is this the only thing you need to do to improve your guitar playing? Heck no. But if you're stuck and you have no idea how to solve a problem, inversion helps you get moving in the right direction. Next, we have the idea of exaggerating the difficulty. And this is one of my favorite ways to practice and not a lot of guitar players know about this. And this is closely related to the topic of problem inversion. Because sometimes the trick to solving your guitar playing problems is to make them even harder to fix. I know this sounds ridiculous, but it will all make sense in a second. Now, why do we want to exaggerate the difficulty? There's three reasons. First, exaggerating your problem helps you get clear on what your problem actually is instead of guessing. That's because you can't exaggerate a problem you're not clear on. Second, once you exaggerate the problem and become clear on it, you can focus on it more easily and fix it more quickly. And third, the original problem often feels much easier to fix when you stop exaggerating it and go back to normal practice. For example, do you have problems with tension in your right shoulder? Tense your shoulder even harder on purpose and then relax it. Do you have problems with inside picking, which is the pick moving back and forth between two strings? Then do the same motion of inside picking, but this time skip a string and then go back to two adjacent strings. If you have sloppy guitar playing issues, insert even more string noise on purpose into your playing and then try go back to playing cleanly again. If this sounds really crazy, I don't blame you, but give it a try and you'll see that the only thing crazy about it is how well it works. So practice it like this. Repeat your exercise in the non-exaggerated way for 10 repetitions or for 30 seconds. Then repeat your exercise with the problem exaggerated for 5 repetitions or 15 seconds. And go back and forth like that for 10 minutes. And I promise this is going to be one of the most productive 10 minute guitar practice sessions ever. Now the third thing naturally talented guitar players do is they hit the bullseye every time they practice. There's something called the guitar practice bullseye model and it has three layers, the what, the how, and the why of practicing. Let's talk about the what layer first. 
A simple name for this is mindless practicing. For example, let's say you're trying to build your guitar speed. So the what layer of your speed means going to YouTube or Google and searching for how to build guitar speed. And then you make a list of all the exercises, licks and drills you find and you try to practice all of them because every exercise you find looks just as good as any other. And here's the thing, everyone is telling you what to do, including myself. And a lot of the information you can find out there is pretty good. But the problem is that information doesn't make you better. It's just information. It's like crude oil. It's valuable in theory, but it's useless in practice until someone converts it into a finished, usable product like gasoline you can put on your car. And the worst part is, finding new stuff to practice makes you temporarily feel like you're making progress. And that's why most guitar players are addicted to this hamster wheel of looking for more stuff to practice. And when they don't get any better with the stuff they have, they look for even more stuff to practice because it's so much easier to find the next shiny object to practice than to get deeper into the next two layers. Now let's talk about the next layer, the how layer. You get to the how layer when you realize that two different guitar players can practice the same exact exercise and get completely different results from it all because of how they practice it. That's when you start looking for different practice methods or ways to focus on your problems and problem solving tools that make you better every time you practice. And a lot of breakthroughs happen in this layer, the how layer. Now, the why layer. The why layer is the bullseye of your guitar practice. You can think of the why layer as knowing what not to do when you practice. This is where you filter through all the irrelevant noise of exercises and practice methods and only focus on what matters. Now here's the irony. Naturally talented guitar players instinctively practice at this level all the time or almost all the time, but they often cannot verbally explain it to others why and how they do what they do. And this is why most people only observe the surface level of practicing because they look at what their favorite guitar players do on the surface. And this is also why most naturally talented guitar players only teach at the surface level as well. Few guitar players ever learn how and why naturally talented guitar players practice. And if you wanna learn more about the how and why of practicing, Click the link in the description of this video and watch my free masterclass on a new practice method that naturally talented guitar players instinctively do to build speed with less practice and more importantly, without slow practice. And I give you my word, I am not going to give you any stuff to practice because we're going to go deep into the layers of the how and the why so you start hitting the bullseye every time you pick up your guitar. And by the way, the reason I'm giving you this masterclass for free is because I want to give you a taste of what I can do for you in my paid rapid fire guitar practice training program where I help frustrated guitar players make more progress with less practice. But I first want to give you a taste of what I can do for you at no cost to you. So go ahead, click the link below to check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to also hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell. So YouTube lets you know when I upload new videos just like this for you. And let me know in the comments below, which of these three guitar practice methods you found most interesting? Is it inverting of problems? Is it exaggerating the difficulty? Or is it hitting the bullseye of practicing? Let me know by leaving a comment down below. I go through all your comments and I reply to all your questions personally. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. Have fun practicing and I will see you very soon.